public. Interest. I would agree with you in most cases <laughs> mm -hmm. with this audience, not all of this audience, but a large share of this audience. We are, here's the problem with Gary Johnson. Uh, Gary Johnson uh, came in and uh, he said, or was on, and he said twice, and then uh, the running mate, Weld, said the same thing, that we said, how can you have a law, you know, that a photographer has to take a picture or wedding right. cake? It, it doesn't make any sense. You can't be for ultimate freedom and maximum personal responsibility and also say, oh, and the government should regulate that. As, right. as Penn Jillette and I talked about, right. you know, you should be able to have your business do anything that you want. And I have a reason to go, I'm never going to go there. I love Ben Gillette, so <laughs> this is going to be hard for him to watch or listen to. <laughs> um, that's right to a point. There's a, a, I can get in a long discussion of Anglo-American contract law and stuff like that, but that's probably really boring for your listeners. <laughs> the point is that there's this tradition of something being open to the public. A movie theater is open to the public. Uh, a drugstore is open to the public. And open to the public means if you're a person who's not belligerent and you come in, I sell you the stuff off of my shelves. I don't get to say, hey, you can't buy the candy bar because you're white. Sorry, leave. That runs through our legal history. There's also a long tradition in America, which is really different, of a, a strong and vibrant First Amendment, both the Free Exercise Clause and the Free Speech Clauses that say, I get to say whatever I want, government can't stop me, other people can disagree, and I get to exercise my religion as I choose, as long as I don't violate laws of general applicability, and there can be no compelled speech. And that's big. You can't make me say something I don't want to say as the government. The tension comes when you get in the middle, because what are we talking about when we talk about cakes? Because it's a cake issue, and it's a <laughs> hypothetical, and it's weird, but up in the Northwest, it's not hypothetical. Are we talking about, hey, it's a Costco sheet cake, I just want to buy a cake? In which case, yeah, you have to sell that cake to everybody. It's off Absolutely. the shelf. If yeah. it's, I want you to write, I want you to express, I want you to put Use words your onto the cake, then it's different. And then photography gets into a weird spot because, you know, there, some orders. of it's art, some of it's documentary, you know, mm -hmm. like art, art is the artist's message in there. These are hard issues. There isn't one right answer. It's not black and white. A lot of life isn't black and white. And what well, I've been trying to do it's amazing. is get libertarians to focus on how many areas do we agree in? Yeah. How many areas do we agree in? If a this lot. is a point of contention, where you are a little farther on the free speech side than the Costco sheet cake side, that's okay because we agree on so much else. So I agree. I agree let's with, have a beer I, and talk about this, but yeah. let's work together I agree on with all you. the other stuff. Yeah, I agree with you. It, it just, to me, it seems like a, a, very, um, a very easy um, call. I have, I don't, for instance, you don't have a right to come in and to me to come in and say, oh, well, I'm just not serving your kind. So you get out. Mm -hmm. I got to serve you everything. But if you're asking me to do something that is part right. of a religious ceremony or something that I feel is religious. Right. Then that's an easy call. It's coerced expression. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and it's just so easy, black and white. It did not um, seem to be Gary's position with what you're articulating, I, here, I, which I would I'm totally comfortable. In fact, I agree with you on yeah, what you just articulated. Too. I just that's not what he articulated. I, I got that. Yeah. And no candidate is perfect. Yeah. No okay. person is perfect. Okay. I love Gary Johnson. Mm -hmm. He's strong in some areas. He's weak in others. As we Austin Peterson so, is yeah. strong in some areas and weak in others. Weak in others. So, and the delegates make those choices. Right. You know, we're the. You want to talk about big differences between the Libertarian Party and the old parties? We had a convention in Orlando where a thousand delegates from across the country, selected by state Libertarian parties, came into a room. Our bylaws explicitly prohibit bound delegates. Every single one of those people was totally free to vote for any presidential nominee. They got to meet them, they got to shake their hands, they got to see them in debates. And those delegates in that room made a choice about who they thought would best right. represent the Libertarian Party. My job as chairman is to 
empower the choice of those delegates. So I would get these calls where people would say, well, what are you going to do about Weld or what are you going to do about Johnson? The delegates decide. Yeah, and yeah. I don't decide. No, I know that. It's not, it's, it's, no, I agree with you. It's not you, it's not the party. Now, the question is, how, how does, because to me, this looks like such an easy place to go and unite the country. Because mm -hmm. I, I really believe I can live next to Ben and Jerry for the rest of my life, oh, and they can be... They live here? No. I thought they were up in Vermont. Yeah. <laughs> but I could live next to them for the rest of my life, and we'd never have... We'd, have be, we'd be perfectly fine neighbors. Right. It's only when I try to affect them or their business or what they believe, or they try to do it to me right. um, coercively through governments. So, um, and I think that's where a, a vast majority of America is. I could be wrong. How do you shape that message to cut through and, and uh, appeal to, to more people? Because I think that's where people are. I think you start by changing people's premises. Um, the veterans of the culture wars, like many veterans, bear scars from that. Because these are fights that we had during the 90s and the 2000s between the right and the left over who gets to have government tell you how to live your life. Mm -hmm. That's what made them so bitter. Right. That's what made them so angry because the stakes of losing were so high. Correct. In a libertarian society, what we change, what the party is trying to do in changing America is take that option off the table. No matter how much Amen. we disagree about how you live your life or I live my life, which we may, probably have some some yeah. disagreements we agree as a premise that i won't try and use the government to control you and you won't use it to try and control me this is so easy and it makes it makes for better debates and discussions and dialogues because we can get heated and we can get angry and we can shout and yell or cry or whatever but we know at the end of the day it's safe mm -hmm. because we're exchanging ideas not fists or guns that's what we're trying to to change about the culture of politics in this country libertarian politics is basically it's anti-politics politics political economy generally is different groups of people arguing over which one of them gets to take your tax money and yep. give it to their corporate cronies yep. not theirs because theirs are the good ones not the other guys the other guys yeah. you don't want to give any money to him but the developer that i know oh yeah no that's the guy that should get your tax dollars we're seeing this with Donald Trump. The right. right was against the stimulus package. Now, until he did it. Until he's got right. a bigger stimulus package and they're for it. We're fundamentally different because we're the only political party in the country that's dedicated to the idea that you have a right to pursue happiness any way you choose, as long as you don't hurt other people and you don't take their stuff. We're fighting to make it so the government stops taking stuff away from you and stops controlling your life. Okay, so let's get into that. When we come sure. back, I want to, and you're going to be with me on the blaze. So we'll maybe spend another ten minutes, and then tonight, uh, uh, tonight at five o'clock, we'll spend a full hour. And I really want to concentrate on that because there's a new study out, and this is of conservatives, conservative millennials. Forty, uh, fifty-one percent say that the government, uh, that the the First Amendment is sacrosanct, that you have a right to speech. Uh, and right to free press, 49% say that that is sacrosanct. But the government has to decide what speech is okay. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. And those conservatives that are saying that, how do we change that?